Hi everyone, my name is Kevin. Today I wanna to show you how you could create a timer in Microsoft PowerPoint so you could create something that looks like this. All right, well that's pretty cool and you could use a timer for many different purposes within PowerPoint. Maybe you're hosting a session and you wanna give people time to grab some breakfast in the morning. Set a timer so people know how much time they have left. Maybe you're a teacher and you're running a quiz in your class and you wanna give people a certain amount of time to answer a question. Or maybe you've had a long, long lecture, it's going on for a few hours and you wanna offer a break in the middle of the day and you wanna use a timer so people know how much time they have left. Whatever your reason, it's fairly easy to create a timer in Microsoft PowerPoint. I'm gonna show a few different ways to set up timers. I'm gonna go and first off show you how you could do it without installing any add-ins at all. So just using the animation pane within Microsoft PowerPoint. So we're gonna start simple, then we're gonna get a little more complex with our animations. And then at the very end, I'm also gonna show you how you could use add-ins to add a timer to Microsoft PowerPoint. It's probably the easiest way to do it, but what we're gonna do is if there's one section that you're more interested than the others, I've included chapters in this YouTube video, so you could go down to the timeline and then choose the section of the video that you're interested in. Nonetheless, if you watch this whole video, you'll not only learn how to create a timer, but you'll also gain some fundamental skills that you could use when you're working in PowerPoint, so even outside of timers. All right, does that sound like a plan? Let's jump on PowerPoint and uh, get started. Here I am on my PC and I have the latest and greatest version of Microsoft PowerPoint that comes with Microsoft 365. And also as full disclosure, before we jump into this, I work at Microsoft as a full-time employee. My HR department requires me to say this. Here I am and I have PowerPoint open and I have a few different slides and I wanna show you how you could create your very own timer. Now to do that, I wanna open a few different panes that will help us with creating different timers. And so I'm gonna click on the Home tab up here on top and then that opens up the Home ribbon. And over here, I wanna open up something called the Selection pane. So I'm gonna click on Select and this will open up the Selection pane. I'll go ahead and I'll just lock that on the side. As a quick note, this is something that'll help you with animations and setting up timers, but it'll also help you just in general using Microsoft PowerPoint. I'll give a quick overview of how this works. One of the things in the selection pane, it shows all my different objects that are on the slide. So here, if I click on the title text, you'll see it highlights this item. Or here, if I click on the background image, it'll select that item within the selection pane. This gives me a view of all of the different objects that are on my slide. And what's nice is you could even rename things by double clicking. So here I've set this to title text. I've also set this one to the timer. And so you can name the different items. What's neat too is you could either show or hide different items that are on your slide. Here I could hide all or show all. And what's interesting too is the order that it appears within this list, that's the layer that the item is on. So here you can see that the title text is currently on the top layer and my background is on the bottom layer. Here if I bring the background to the top, it's now over everything else. And here I could drag it to the bottom again. This will help us as we set up our animation. So I wanted to just give a quick overview of how that works. The second pane that I wanna open is the animation pane. This will also help us with setting up our timers. And to open the animation pane, I'm gonna go up to the animation pivot on top. That'll open up the animation ribbon. And then over here on the right-hand side, there's an option that says animation pane. Let's go ahead and click on that as well. Now that I have both the animation and the selection pane open, I could quickly jump back and forth between them by clicking on either this icon for the selection pane or clicking on this icon for the animation pane. So I could very quickly jump back and forth, or maybe I just wanna leave the selection pane up, in which case I could drag it and then let go, and then I could have both my selection pane and my animation pane open at the same time. So I'm gonna leave both of these open for now. Now what I wanna do is on this slide that you see here, I want this progress bar to decline as there's less time uh, remaining. And so let's say that I wanna give people 20 seconds to answer a question, and so I want this to drop down uh, as the time is elapsing. 
So what I'm gonna do, this is by far one of the easiest animations that you can do. And so here I'm gonna click on this rectangle item. So I've named this timer. And what I wanna do now is I'm gonna, within the animation pivot here, I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna add an animation. Now there are a few different ways I could an add an animation. I could either click here and select an animation or I can select from this section here. The reason I like going to add animation is let's say you wanna do two animations. Well I could add one and then I could add another if I select an animation from this section, it'll override whatever animation I already have in place. So I always prefer to go to add animation, just a little thing I've learned over time by doing animations. So in this case, I'm gonna click on add animation and I want this progress bar on the screen to go down. And this fly out option, I think this one will do the job. So I'm gonna click on that. And there you see that it declines as the time is elapsing. Now what I could do is right now, if I just play the animation, so I'm gonna play it from the start, you'll notice that it goes pretty quickly. Well, I wanna define how long this timer is up on the screen. And to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this item in the animation pane. I'm gonna right click on it, and then I see something called timing. Let's click on timing. And within timing, what I could do is I have all different settings. So here I could define how I want this to start. And in this case, I wanna click to start the timer. So I'm gonna say on click, let's start the timer. And what I could do then is I could set the duration. So if I click on this drop down menu, you'll see that I have a few different options from 20 seconds to five to three to two to one, all the way down to 0.5. But let's say that I wanna make this a 10 second timer. It doesn't look like 10 seconds is on here. Luckily, what I can do is I could simply delete this 0.5 and I could type in 10. So I could type in any number of seconds that I want. I could even type in, let's say 60 seconds for a minute, 120 for two minutes. I could type in any time amount that I want, but 10 seconds sounds good. And let's go ahead now and I'm going to click on OK. So there now you'll see that my animation or my timer is set up for 10 sec or yeah, it's set up for 10 seconds here. And here you'll see that the progress bar or the timer is going down. And once it reaches the bottom, the timer is up. So this is a very easy way that I can create my very own timer. And it really doesn't require much effort. Also, if you're interested in using any of these timers or slides that I have set up, I've included a link to this PowerPoint presentation in the description. Let's jump on to the next slide. And here what I've done is I have a nice green background and I have a watch. And here I wanna also show how you could create a very simple timer also using animations in PowerPoint. And once again for this, I'm gonna pull up the selection pane and I have a few different items on the slide. I have the background picture. I have my oval which sits behind the watch and then I have this watch icon on the top layer. So I want to apply the animation to the oval. So I'm going to select the oval here and now I'm going to go back up. We're within the animation view and I'm going to add an animation to this. And for this one, I don't want to do a fly in or a fade in. Instead, what I want to do is let's apply a wheel to this. So let's click on the wheel and here, just like a watch goes around, just like the uh, little tickers go around on the watch or the arms go around the watch, I could have this visual go around. And so now, similar to what I did before, let's open up the animation pane again. I'm gonna right click on the oval and then I'm gonna go down to timing. And here too, what I could do is I could now set the duration and similar to before, I could also just type in a value that I want. So maybe we're just gonna set this to a 10 second duration and then I'm gonna click on okay. And here you can see my watch now also effectively acts as a timer. Uh, and so just a very nice way where I could present uh, time passing. Those were two very easy examples of how you could use animations. Now I wanna get a little more complex and show you the full power of how you could use animations to create timers. And to do that, we're gonna jump on to the third slide here. So I have this nice sailboat with a header that says time remaining. So this is a good hint that here too, we're gonna create another timer. And here I have a display where I wanna show my timer. So what I wanna do now is let's insert some text into the timer. And maybe I'll just make this a five second timer, but you could set it for whatever period you want. I more just wanna set it to five seconds just to demonstrate. So here I'm gonna go ahead and type five seconds and let's go ahead, I'm gonna center this text and I'm gonna insert this into my display and I need to set a different font color so it stands out. So maybe I'll just pick a color from this background. And so there we have five seconds. I'll go ahead and increase it a little bit just so it stands out. And then this is gonna count down to zero. And at which point, once it hits zero, we're gonna say all done. 
So this is my first item here, and this is where the selection pane really comes in handy. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the selection pane out. And just to make sure I can keep track of things, I'm gonna also title this item. So I'm gonna call this five seconds. I've already gone ahead and I've titled all the other items on this slide just to make it easy and to know what is what. So here it is. I've also centered this within uh, this timer. And now I'm gonna go ahead and let's paste in four seconds. So I'm gonna type in four seconds. And here too, I'm gonna go ahead and let's change the time. Now one easy way to work with this is I could hide my five second uh, object and then that'll only show me the four second item. And now I'm gonna paste in another one and here I'm gonna go down to three seconds and I'm just gonna do this again and again until I have it all the way to zero. Okay, so I've added all of my seconds to this and then for the very final one, I wanna add one that says all done. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's center this text and once I get all the way down to zero seconds, I'm gonna say all done. And that way we know that the timer is finished. So I'll go ahead and center this as well. And I'm gonna name this one all done. Now one of the things I wanna do is I wanna confirm that I created all of the seconds properly. So I'm gonna go through and just make sure I've added all of them. So here I have five seconds, four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one second, and then we are all done. All right, so now what I wanna do is I wanna animate these. And by default, I wanna just have five seconds appear, but then I wanna have it disappear after one second. So once again, we're gonna use animations here. And what I'm gonna do, let's jump into the animations pivot again. And here I'm gonna add an animation and I'm gonna have this fade out after one second. So it's gonna fade over the course of a second. And like we did before, let's right click on this item, let's go to timing, and then I wanna set it for one second. Okay, now what you'll see is it disappears. And if I right click on it again, I wanna to go to effect options and show some of the different options. Uh, within here, and I clicked on the timing pivot, what I wanna do is I want this to start on click, so whenever I'm ready to start my five second countdown, I'll simply click on the mouse to kick it off. Okay, so I have my first one, let's see how that looks. So after one second, it'll disappear, and now we want the next item to appear. So what I'm gonna do now is, let me show the four second item, and for this one, let's add an animation, let's go up here, and I'm gonna have this appear, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another animation and here I'm gonna have it fade out over the course of a second. So here what I wanna do is I'm gonna right click on this, go to timing, and then I'm gonna set this for a duration of one second. And what I wanna do is I want this to be automatic. So instead of doing on click, I want it to simply go with the previous item because the countdown is gonna start right at the four second mark. So I'll do with previous and let's click on okay. And then similarly for the beginning of the four second timer, we also want this to start uh, with the previous animation or after the previous animation. So I'm gonna go to start after previous. So now what I'm gonna do is I'll bring the five second uh, back in, then we have the four seconds. And here you can see on the animation pane how it's all gonna work. So I click to start the five second countdown. At the, at the end of the first second, that's when four seconds appears. And then over the course of the next second, that one will disappear. So here we can preview what it looks like from the beginning. So I have five seconds, four seconds. So I've done that now for five seconds, four seconds. I wanna show how you could very easily take this animation that I set up and then apply it to three seconds, two seconds, and one second so you don't have to go through and do all this manual effort to create it again. So why don't we go ahead and I'll show you how you could do this. So let's hide five seconds for now. I wanna take the four second animation and apply it to three, two, and one. And that's where you have something called the animation painter. Now, if you've never heard of the painter before, there's something, if I go over to the home tab, there's something called the format painter. And I'll show quickly how the format painter works just to help you understand the whole idea of painting. So here, let me insert some text on my slide and I'll just call it test. So here you can see the text that says test. It has a certain font. It has a certain font size. It has a certain color. Let's say I wanna apply the same color that I have for the title to this text. I could simply click on the title. I could click on the format painter and then I could click on this other section of text and that'll apply all the same formatting to this text. That's why it's called the format painter. Just like that concept, you also have something called the animation painter and that'll take all the different animation characteristics and it'll apply it to another object that you select.
So in this case, let's take the animation painter. I'm gonna copy all of the characteristics of the four seconds, and then I'm gonna hide four seconds, show three seconds, and I'm gonna apply the format, or I'm gonna apply the animation painter. And so now let me show four seconds again, and let me show five seconds, and we'll play from the top so you can see how it works. So five, four, three. There we go. And so now all I need to do is I need to keep applying the animation painter all the way down. So here, I'm gonna copy the animations from three seconds and I'll apply it to two seconds. And now I'm gonna take the format from two seconds and I'm gonna go ahead and apply it to one second. And then once we get to done, this one's gonna be a little bit different now because we want done to appear and then we want it to stay up. So what I'm gonna do here is I'll just add an animation and I'll say appear. And for this one, I'm gonna right click on it and then I'm gonna simply say after the previous one. And then that will just stay up. So now let's go back and I'll go ahead and show all the different items. And now let's go to the very top and let's click on play and see what this looks like. So five, four, three, two, one, all done. So that's a very easy example of how you can set up your own timer using animations in PowerPoint and setting the different times for the items. Now what I wanna show is this is how you can manually create your own timer. The nice thing about PowerPoint is it also includes add-ins. So let me go ahead, I'll add a new slide here. And to insert an add-in, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to insert up on the top bar here. And when there's an option over on the ribbon called add-ins, my add-ins. Let's go ahead and click on my add-ins. And so one thing you wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to get an add-in first. And to get an add-in, you're gonna go over to store. And once you pull up the store, these are all different add-ins that you could add into PowerPoint. Also, they have add-ins for Word, they have add-ins for Excel. But in this case, I'm gonna search for timer. And you're gonna see a whole bunch of different timer add-ins that pop up, they have different reviews, you could figure out which one you like. What I've done though is I've already gone ahead and I've added two timers that I thought worked fairly well. So I'll show you what these look like. The first one is called break time and I'm gonna go ahead and let's add that into my slide. So here's the break time add-in. I'm gonna hide the selection pane for now. What I could do is I could define how much time I want, so 10 minutes, I could say how many seconds and let's go ahead and start it. So here I have a very basic timer. I don't have to do any types of animations. It simply appears on my slide. So I'm gonna stop it for a moment. Some of the things I can also do here is I could apply different backgrounds. So whether it's a bar, whether it's breakfast. And here, let me, just to make things look nice, I'm gonna have this take up the entire slide. So I'll bring it to the top corner, bring it to the bottom corner. And what I can do here then is I'm using the control key and my mouse key to zoom in on this add-in. And so now if I click on start, and I move my mouse key, or I move the mouse pointer away, here you'll see that the controls down at the bottom fade away, and so I simply have the background image, and then I have the timer on top. Unfortunately though, with this add-in, I can't customize the background images. I have to use one of the preset ones that they provide, but all in all, you get a fairly effective timer with very minimal effort. So that timer is now running. Let me go ahead and stop that. And I also wanna show what the other add-in looks like. So once again, I'm gonna to go to insert. I'm gonna to go to add-ins. And then here, I'm gonna to go to the easy timer. And let's go ahead and let's add this to the slide. Here's my easy timer. It's kind of similar to the, the previous one where I have different settings. I could set my duration. I could say whether it's a bar. So if I have a bar representing how much time is left or is it a digital timer? Uh, or is it a combination of them? So here, uh, this looks good, I'll set the, I'll just set kind of a traditional clock, I'll set the duration at just 20 seconds. I could even have a reminder appear, I could say what my interval is, so maybe for the interval I'll just go with one seconds. I could even have a sound go along with it, and then once it's up I could have an alarm play, and here's a quick demonstration of what this looks like. So here it's going in one second increments, and I could add additional time, so it offers lots of different power. All right, well that was a quick overview of how you can create your very own timer in Microsoft PowerPoint, whether you use animations or if you simply insert an add-in. If this video helped you learn how to create your very own timer, please give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get a notification anytime new content like this comes out. And lastly, if you wanna see me cover any other topics in the future, leave a comment down below. I read them all and I'll add it to my list of videos to create. That's actually where this video originated from. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed and hope to see you next time. Bye.